Hello and welcome once again to What Is Story Say. Today I have a new section called Book It. I'm going to be reading from Guyanese authors and the first book I'm going to read in this brand new section is by Melva Archer Persico called Mame's Legacy. I'm going to read parts of the first chapter. If you like it, you know what to do. Subscribe and follow. So listen up and let's talk the story. What is Mame's legacy? Let's start with the house. Mame's house. The sound of sawing and hammering filled the air. A small pile of termite-eaten wood lay in a corner near the front fence. Soon it would all be burned, along with the nest the workers had found. The carpenters were busy, sawing and nailing the new boards in place. It was mainly the window, the window frames and sills, that had succumbed to the destructive gnawing of those annoying termites. In a matter of hours, with a fresh coat of paint, white paint, the house looked like new. High and proud on its concrete pillars, the house stood out on the narrow pothole street. Bright white graced its walls and its awnings and casement windows always welcomed the abundant smells and sounds that wafted in on balmy breezes. This was Mommy's house, a house built bit by bit, on land bought with years of accumulated box hands and proceeds from her sale of ground cocoa, guava jelly, guava cheese, and other sweetmeats. There was very little idle time for those who dwelt there. A workhouse is what they called it when they were out of Mammy's earshot, of course. She, however, knew that hard work brought fine results. It was one of the many lessons she had passed on to those in her charge. Maybelline Lewis stood tall and stately. Well into her 80s, she carried herself with a regality that harkened back to the ancient continent of her four parents. Born at the turn of the century, she was the proud grandchild of John Thomas, who together with his wife, Carolyn, were among the last batch of enslaved Africans to be shipped to British Guyana from West Africa before the slave trade ended. She was barely out of her teens when love and marriage to Festus Lewis took her on, an, on a 60 year journey of for better for worse, until death do us part. She really believed in those promises and did her best to keep them faithfully. Motherhood was her badge of honor and she wore it. It was with great fondness that the children she bore and the many she nurtured alongside these all called her Ma May. She it was who ruled the roost in that white wooden house where manners, respect, and proper etiquette reigned. Manners make it man was a mantra she drilled into her charges. With good manners and a solid education, you will go far in this world. In my day, Six standard was the most schooling we could get. Now y'all have opportunity to go to high school and even higher. Make the most of it. Don't take your schooling for granted. Click, clack, click, clack. She stretched her neck, leaned back her head against the wooden rocker and sighed deeply. Nobody could say she hadn't done her best. A faint smile filled with quiet pride played lightly on the corners of her mouth as she reflected on how well she had done. Claire, a teacher, Joseph, an electrician, Baldwin, an education officer, Sandra, a nurse. The sound of a car horn tooting disturbed her reveries. She leaned forward and looked through the window. Philip was passing on his way up the East Bank to take care of his civil service duties. She waved to him as he drove off. She shook her head and smiled. This time with incredulity. I would have never believed if anybody had told me that that Philip would become a big boy in the government, a big government official. Uh, official. That boy didn't like school. He was always to some, up to some trick. And the 
any other thing to get out of going to school. Now look at him, driving fancy cars and making all kind of speeches on the radio. A quiet laugh escaped her lips as she recalled her great nephew's escapades. She would never forget the day when Janie called her with the news, Mommy, Philip in hospital. Part one. Why is Philip in hospital? Can you guess? Listen to the next part. See you there.